Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you how to model a knife, something like this, in Cinema 4D. I'm using some different methods than uh, you would normally use. I want to make it all procedural and Cinema 4D makes it very easy for me to do this. I'm not very good at modeling, but um, all these fine details, as you can see here, for example, they are very easy to do with the tools that Cinema 4D provides. There are some disadvantages with this method, but um, I'll come to this later. So let's get started. First of all, we have to import our reference image into our viewport. For this, we switch to front mode and import the image. Next step is to draw a basic spline around the blade. So we do that now. And once that is done, we're gonna align the points so that the blade is straight. The next step is that we duplicate the spline and start drawing the inner part that we can see here. So we go to point selection and start moving the points until it fits. When that's done, we're going to switch to perspective mode and just drag out the spline a little bit in the Z direction. We're going to switch the order of those two splines and put them both into a loft. So what we can see now is that we have a basic shape, but there is a problem with this tip. And this is because the number of points of our first spline don't match the number of the second spline and the calculation gets messed up. So we have to add two additional points to our original spline. And now we can see that it fits better and also the tip is now correct. So what we can do now is switch on organic form and upper the mesh subdivisions and we get a very good looking shape. Also we can go to the cap section of the loft and switch the type from angons to quadrangles and make it a regular grid. This is maybe better for upcoming operations we do. So next step is that we're gonna put the loft into a symmetry. And right now we can see that the mirror plane is not correct, but when we switch it to X, Y, we get a perfectly shaped knife. We can always lower the thickness or upper the thickness by moving our second spline. So this is how it looks so far. The next step is that we want to create these holes up there on the blade. To do this, I'm just going to create a simple cube and turn on the fillet and resize it that it fits. I'm going to put the cube into a cloner. The mode is set to linear, which is good, but we need to stretch it out in the X and uh, count the holes. There are nine holes, so put the count up to nine. And I'm going to adjust the cube size even more and also the rotation and the distance of the cloner. So now that we have this, I'm gonna create a bool and put the symmetry into the bool and also the cloner. And we can see that this has happened. And this is exactly what we want. We have to create another hole at the tip, but this is very easy. We just gonna go to the cloner copy the cube and position it correctly. We have to resize it and even upper the fillet radius maybe, and also maybe the fillet subdivisions to give it an even smoother look. So what we can do now is we can group the cloner and put the cube into this group so that everything that is inside of this group works as a cutout for our symmetry object. I'm going to adjust the cube's fillet radius and also the fillet subdivisions. This is just a small detail. Next thing is going to be this kind of carved in area. For this, I'm going to create a rectangle and resize it correctly. And then I'm going to convert the rectangle into a spline. I'm going to switch to points mode and just go ahead with the knife tool by pressing K and K and draw four additional points. I want to bend those four points, so I'm going to switch to top mode. 
and select all the four points and just push them a little bit in the Z axis. I want those points to be smooth, so I just right click and say soft interpolation. I'm gonna put the rectangle into a extrude and afterwards the extrude object into a symmetry and play around with the angle until it fits right. I'm gonna re-enable the blade and adjust the extrude object even more and put the whole symmetry into our groups object of our boolean. But there you can see the advantages of working in a procedural manner. I can always go back and change something. I'm gonna rename this to blade and now we're gonna create the handle. I'm gonna create a circle and just adjust it that it fits the handle. I'm gonna put the circle into a loft and just control click and drag it so that we get this tube. And again, by just copying and resizing the circle and moving it around, we get this perfectly shaped beginning of the handle. And uh, now to this section, it has these furrows. For this, we need to create an uh, n-sided object and create these furrows by hand. I'm just gonna create an n-side and just copy the radius of our last circle insert it into our end side and put the end side into our circle three. We want the end side to be exactly at this point. So I'm just putting it in and reset the position scale and rotation by clicking on PSR. So now we upper the sides of the end gun. I'm putting it to 84 and I'm gonna convert it into a spline. So I'm gonna select the points where those holes maybe could be just uh, eyeballing it. And uh, I'm gonna invert the selection and I'm gonna scale the points up. And in our end side, I'm gonna change the type to maybe Akima. And we also have to upper our subdivisions maybe to 100 and you can already see that it looks much better now. Also check on organic form. And I'm gonna go back and just duplicate the end side, stretch it out and repeat the whole process until the handle is finished. And this is looking good so far, I'm just going to rename the loft to Handle. The next section is the protection part in the middle. And if we take a look at a reference image, there's this ring and also the shape that goes downwards. So I'm going to create a circle and I'm going to adjust the radius and activate ring in the circle's options. The next step is that I'm gonna draw a spline for the lower part of this protection. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. And I'll put the spline into symmetry. Again, make sure that the points are centered. It needs to be zeroed out. So I'm gonna just duplicate the symmetry just to make sure that I have the original. And I'm just gonna convert this one into a spline. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this lower part because I want to join these two points, these two lower points together by right clicking and set it to join and I'm gonna make close spline so we get a perfectly closed spline. So we need this spline to be in the same axis as the circle. I'm just gonna drop the spline into the circle and type in PSR and uh, just drop it out. And I'm gonna put the circle and the spline into a spline mask. Just gonna drop them in. So we can see that something is wrong here. If I switch to perspective, we can see that. Very good. This is because the axis is off of the spline mask. 
if I switch it to another axis, we're good to go. I'm going to delete the original symmetry, we don't need that anymore. And uh, also duplicate the spline mask, just to make sure that we have an original. I'm just going to convert this one into a spline. Then I'm going to put the spline into an extrude. And just adjust it so that it fits. Also what I want to do is I want to bevel the points so we get some rounded edges. Just gonna select the bottom two points, right click on chamfer and click and drag to the right. I'm gonna repeat this step with the other points as well. Now let's clean up our project and call this one protection and this is basically it. I'm gonna change the roundings of our protection by going to caps and set both caps to fillet caps and just adjust the radius and maybe the step size. So now maybe to a little bit of a disadvantage, the technique I used makes it very hard for me to bevel these edges up here, for example. In uh, traditional workflows, you would just model this with um, some polygons and then put on maybe a subdivision and also bevel it. But what we can do is we can put this whole thing into a volume builder. This is uh, only available for you if you are on uh, version R20 and above. So I put this into a volume builder and then into a volume measure. I have to lower the, um, the voxel size to maybe one centimeter and put on a smooth layer. Put the mode to a mean curvature and we get this very smooth edges here. We can even lower the voxel size so that we get some even sharper edges. But the edges are beveled a little bit so it reflects the light even better if you put some light on it afterwards. So now to this issue here, we get some jagged edges, but we can solve that by going into our rectangle and uh, switch the intermediate points to subdivided. And we get some smooth shading. So if we change our view to something else that we can see the lines, we can see that we have a very, very dense mesh. This workflow is not intended to be like if you're Let's say if you're a game developer or something, if you want to keep the mesh very light. But I think in most cases, if you're not, and if you want to make it look good, this is maybe something you can use. Right now I'm going to fire up Octane. I'm going to do the whole shading process in Octane. And if I just do a basic HDRI lighting and put um, a metallic material, for example, on, on our blade, you can see that it looks very good. And it catches the light at the edges very good. I'm going to do the shading in, as I said, in Octane. And the um, cool thing in Octane is that we can play around with the film width. I put the material on it, it's a metal material. And uh, if I just play around with the float value of the film width, we get this really, really cool looking material. Also, what I did is I inserted a texture for the roughness, changed the texture protection to box, so now we can see that better like an ornament and I'm just gonna play around with the scale and also I connect the same node into the bump input which gives me some nice bump for the handle and also for the protection I use some textures I downloaded from polygon.com and there is actually a plugin provided for Cinema 4D which uh, already uh, does all the things for you. You don't have to uh, manually connect the nodes. Just gonna play around with the scale and the projection. So also I want a different material on the inner edges of the blade and uh, we can achieve that by applying a dirt node. And if we 
just solo this. You can see very good uh, where it takes an effect. You can upper the strength and the radius and uh, even invert it. And we can even combine a regular and an inverted third node together by connecting it to a multiply node. So this third node controls the appearance of another texture I already imported. It's a kind of a scratched metal material. So that's basically it. I'm just gonna put on a floor and um, give it a render. So I hope you liked this tutorial. Um, if so, give me a like, follow me and uh, see you next time. Bye.